So yes, in case some of you guys were a bit worried I wouldn't be making videos on the collector's editions for Doctor Who anymore because of the channel changes, you were wrong! We're still going to be making them. So yeah, but we are going to be doing it a bit differently today, as you might already be able to tell. So we are going to unbox this. We're going to have a look at this beautiful new set for Doctor Who The Collection Season 15. But then, after we've taken a look at the set, and I'm not going to go through page by page because we'll be here forever and the video will probably get really boring, I'm going to watch every episode and give you my initial reaction. I'm not going to do it all today, obviously. I'm going to do an episode a day or something. But yeah. Yeah, we're gonna go through every episode. I'm gonna show you my exact reactions to them because it's fun I've never seen these before so for those of you who haven't been to the channel before and haven't seen me talk about these classic collection sets for Doctor Who I've been unboxing them all on my channel as they've been released I've pre-ordered every single one and gotten them. the really fun thing about these sets for me is I've never seen them They're all first-time watches for me me and Doctor Who my history of the show is is that I watched Christopher Eccleston's debut episode live on TV and from day one of modern who I have been here and that is my full journey of Doctor Who. So I have seen everything from the modern era. I've seen the movie. I've even seen the two Peter Cushion movies which came out in the 60s. But in terms of classic Who, nothing. Other than of course the sets have already been released. So today we're going to unbox season 15 and then we're going to go on the journey of watching it all together. So anyway, I don't know how I'm going to really do this with a mic in my hand. So yeah, you're going to have to bear with me here. I'm going to do some ASMR. Ready? Oh yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh, there it is! And then we throw the box away. Here it is. Oh my god, look at that cover. Mr. Lee Bindings does the artwork for these. Wow, I think he really might have outdone himself on this one. Look at how beautiful that artwork is. Even if you're not a Doctor Who fan, you've got to be able to appreciate how stunning Stunning that looks. Also, I want to say I've got this two days early because of HMV So I was getting stuff a week late with Amazon. So moral of the story is fuck you Amazon Then there's the spine. Look at it beautiful. There's the back The other spine and of course you've got the bottom there Okay, let's open this up. Gonna be very careful here. Also, I want to say no dents, no dings, nothing. HMV so far have been absolutely brilliant for me. Gonna put the mic down while I take the cellophane off. ASMR again. That's enough of that. Oh my god, guys. This is beautiful. This actually might be my favourite cover art for one of the seasons so far. Okay, let's open this up now. Let's take the J card thingy off. Here is the outer art again. And flip it around. And look at that. There's like another spaceship up there. Look at how cool that is. So then we'll open this up again. Here is the inside. And then, of course, the TARDIS doors open. Here we have the inside of the TARDIS, that looks really cool, there's K9. So then of course inside that you get your Doctor Who advertisement, we don't need that. And the book, look at that artwork there. Now I was watching Lee Bindings unbox this on his TikTok, and I noticed that he mentioned that he does all the artwork inside these as well. This man's amazing, like, get him to do the artwork for everything Doctor Who, please. And we're just going to take a look at some random pages in here. But again, just look at that artwork, it's just fantastic, and you get so much information about each episode. Here's another page, look at that, just, the layout is fantastic as well. And there we go, there's another one. So yeah, overall, you know, just a fantastic set from Doctor Who again. So packaging wise, it's the same as all the others, which I love. I love the consistency. Artwork wise, I think this is my favourite one. This looks glorious, man. This looks so freaking cool. We've got the jelly babies and you've got some villains there. I recognise the Centaurin. I'm not sure on who any of the others are, obviously. But here comes the fun part. We're now going to watch all of these. I'm going to give you my initial reactions. So the, the fancy background, the lights, they're not going to be there. It's going to be me laying in my bed watching them so get ready to see bed james and then at the end of this we'll come back we'll talk about the season as a whole and we'll go over some of the bonus features but we're really gonna dive into this set as anakin skywalker once said this is where the fun begins <laughs> It 
It is Sunday. The box set technically comes out tomorrow, so I'm watching this a day early, which is cool. Yes, with my Kylo Ren pajamas. Well, first order, because I'm cool. I'm also really hungover today, so yeah. The first episode, we're gonna try and act as energetic as we can to watch it. So let's get a discount. Here we go then. Let's take the set down. That's season 17. Season 15, I've already put it away and stuff from when we unboxed it. Let's get the first episode out. I forget what the first episode is. The Horror of Fang Rock is the first one. So let's get this in the player. So yeah, first episode, The Horrors of Fang Rock. No, nothing about this. I don't know where we left off with season 14, even though I have watched it, because obviously that set come out, but I can't remember. So I've got my drink here, cozy, working off that hangover as best I can still. We're going to hit play and see what the first episode's like. Also, I want to say how cool these opening credit things are on the disc menu. Really cool. Love that. The effects are just fantastic. Set in the 1900s of the English Channel, the TARDIS lands at Fang Rock, inhabited by only three lighthouse keepers, but when a strange fog covers the island, it can be connected to a strange falling star as mysterious things start to occur and the Doctor must figure out what's going on. So that is the end of the first episode, or the first four, the story, sorry, the first story. So it's four parts, and I don't have loads to say on this one, to be honest. The first three episodes are all pure build-up, very dialogue-heavy. The companion in this one, I didn't really remember her from the series 14 episodes I saw with her in. I don't think she had a hugely strong presence in this. One of the weaker classic Who companions that I've come across so far. I thought Tom Baker was brilliant in it. As he always is. I mean, the guy, he embodies the Doctor. And I thought the side characters were fun. The villain, though. <laughs> the villain was hilarious. It was like a big green gumball bogey thing at the end. I know this show didn't have a huge budget or anything like that. I know. <laughs> this this one was just a, a bit a bit of a bad looking villain. But the episode itself was fine. I, I enjoyed it. The story, I thought it was fine. The horror of Fang Rock, I thought it was, it was interesting. It held my attention, but it's not a standout classic Who episode to me. I'm looking forward to the next one, which we'll do tomorrow night. See you then. <laughs> That's right, to the door. Oh. Let's pretend that that didn't happen, shall we? It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday, and that means today. Keep the mic close, James. Gotta remember to do these things now. Today, we're watching the next episode of Doctor Who, The Collection, Series 15. And what is the next episode? The Invisible Enemy. This one's got K9 on the disc, so... I'm low-key really excited. Again, just like the last episode and um, all the ones I'm going to watch, I know nothing about this. So let's pop the disc in and let's give it a go. Also, I know what a lot of you are wondering right now. You're wondering, why is my PlayStation 5 upside down? Because it had an overheating problem and it went wrong. And the guys in the repair shop told me to have it upside down like that. They said it's less likely to go wrong again. So that's why. Anyway, let's hit play. Let's crack on with the episode. This episode takes place deep in space on a space shuttle and the crew of this ship is infected with a virus which breaks out and spreads quickly. The doctor himself falls victim but Leela is immune. They must try to stop this virus from spreading more together. And there we go. Another story over. And I think I enjoyed this one more which is a bit surprising because I'm learning online that the first story is the most popular one from this season. Maybe it was my hungover mood yesterday. But anyway, I'm really starting to appreciate the companion Leela a lot more in this one. I thought she was a lot better in this story. I like the fact that she took the reins in the first part of this story. K9, I had no idea this was his first episode. So really cool seeing the, the Doctor 
and Leela adopt that robot dog. Very cool. The villain was goofy, but I really enjoyed it. I like the goofy ones like this. Again, I don't think it was as well of a written villain as the first story, but it looked cooler. And in that final episode, I had a lot more fun with it than the bogey monster from the last one. So I really like the possessed crew getting infected with this virus thing. It reminded me of something Moffat would do with Modern Who. So yeah, I thought this was actually a really solid entry. Enjoyed this episode a lot. And it is on to tomorrow's episode now. Woo! -hoo. Do we know what day it is? It is Wednesday, my dudes. And of course, we are here to watch the next episode of Doctor Who The Collection Series 15. And today's episode is Image of the Fendal. Fendal? If I'm not pronouncing that right, I hope they're going to say it a lot in the episode so I pronounce it right when we come back to it at the end. But yeah, again, you know, haven't seen it. I don't know what I can say pre-episode, but I'm excited. I'm wondering how K9's going to tie into this now. Is he going to play a big part in all the episodes from here on out? Or is he going to fade into the background really quick and just sort of be that dog which pops up in the TARDIS every now and then? I don't know. But I'm looking forward to finding out, so let's pop the disc in. The next story sees the Doctor, Leela and K-9 land in England in the 1970s, where a Doctor is experimenting with a new time scanner which has been disrupted. So... I fell asleep last night. Yes, that's right, I fell asleep last night. I got the first three parts of the episode done, but I didn't get the final part done, so... Here we go again. And there's a mysterious skull also causing some problems. Can the Doctor figure out what's going on? And we successfully finished it this time. What did I think of the story? Image of the Fendal. Again, apologies if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I thought it was good. I One thing I think it done really well, actually, was I think this had some of the best side characters of the three stories I've watched so far. I thought they all brought a lot to the table, and the acting was surprisingly okay from some of them, because the acting in these classic hoes is never normally. The companion's really growing on me, I'll say that as well. She's getting better with each episode, it seems. Tom Baker, of course, is smashing it. Do I even need to mention that? Not enough K-9, but that last scene where he nodded when uh, the Doctor asked him, he is my dog, isn't he? I thought that was that was cute. Love K-9. And the villains. Yeah, I, again, I know this show didn't, doesn't have the biggest budget, but the villains so far this season are looking particularly more cheap than usual. I don't know if there's any reasoning behind that, or whether it's just one of those seasons where things looked a little bit more cheap. Any Anyway, I will see you guys later tonight when we're going to watch the fourth story. Woo! Hello. It is the evening, which is a little bit upsetting because it means that I'm that much closer to work again. But we are here to watch the next story of Doctor Who. Hopefully all in one sitting this time. It is getting a bit late. I haven't planned my evening very well. You know, I thought I'd shower before this time so I could be re I could just now relax and watch it and then go to sleep after. But anyway, here we go. The next episode up, of course, is The Sunmakers. As per usual, I have nothing to say about it before we go into it, but on the disc, we've got a very, very confused looking Tom Baker. And again, I haven't looked at reviews or anything for this episode or story so i don't know if this one's meant to be good or bad we're just going in open-minded optimistic let's crack on This story is set on the planet Pluto in the not so distant future, but the planet has been transformed into a new city. There is civilization on it and it has become overrun with a workforce. They are exploiting the planet and the Doctor, Leela and K-9 arrive and they must try and stop this workforce from destroying and ruining the planet.
There we go. We made it through all four parts there. And I'm really tired now. But anyway, what did I think of that story? It was okay. It was a very political one, very dialogue heavy. There wasn't really many action sequences to this one. I didn't find these side characters as interesting either. I find the companion really funny in this one. I just love how in every story so far, she's always just wanting to attack people with her little knife. <laughs> K9 was in this one a lot more, which was cool, and uh, there were some re more really fun scenes with the Doctor. But yeah, overall this episode, this story, it was okay. It was fine. So far, none of these stories are particularly blowing me away. Also, there's never any familiar monsters, I've, you know, so far. I know that some Tarans are in the season, but no Daleks or Cybermen yet. We'll see. They're not on the front cover, so... <laughs> Friday. Hello. It's a great feeling anyway. It always is. Anyway, today I am going to the cinema. I'm going to the cinema. So, we're watching one a bit early tonight. Will I get through all four parts? Probably not. But we're going to attempt it. We're going to try and get through all four parts. I've got three hours to I need to go, so I've got I've got time to watch these. It's just, it's been a long week. I might, I might fall asleep. Just things happen in life now. I am getting older. Anyway, what, what episode are we watching today? Let's have a look. Today's one is Underworld. And I had a look on my serialized TV app and this one is not very well liked. It's got a lot of poor scores. Um, this was the clear standout. Not a very good episode or very good story. But I'm going to judge it for myself because so far the most popular one in the series hasn't been my favorite. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna try this. We're going to try this one out. So let's get the disc in the player. Underworld is set in deep space and sees the Doctor encountering a race which his race, the Time Lords, wiped out, or so he thought. Now he must help the survivors of this particular race go on a quest which will take them to the edge of the galaxy. So, before I could talk about the episode I watched last night, I fell asleep. But I did finish it. I finished all four parts. And it's not one of the worst episodes of Classic Who I've seen. But of this set and of the Tom Baker era, it's... it's potentially one of the worst. I just thought the whole setting was just really boring, just in caves. And the effects, I know that this show didn't have a big budget and Classic Who's effects are not very good at the best of times, but... Wow, like really bad here. Like it, it genuinely there were scenes where these characters are walking and their legs are just cut off. It's really funny. I didn't really think the premise of this episode was very interesting either. So yeah, Underworld, it, it wasn't very good in my opinion. Easily the weakest of the season so far. <laughs> Anyway, as I say, Underworld, the weakest of the season so far. And I say so far because we are we are at the end. We have got the last story and we're going to watch it tonight, right now. This one is a six-part story and it is currently half past eight at night. Yeah, I have no work tomorrow though, so I could stay up and watch it or will I? I don't know, I'm tired. We're going to attempt this sucker. Invasion of Time is the final episode in this set. Final episode we're going to be talking about before we, we round up the show at the end and I give you my overall thoughts. Let's pop the disc in, let's crack on with this final story in the collection for season 15. I'm excited. The Doctor returns home to the planet Gallifrey, where he claims the Presidency, but no one is entirely sure why he has done this as his behaviour is erratic and motives are very mysterious. Along this journey we're going to see some familiar villains in the Centaurans also appear. 
And that's it. We have finished the collection season 15. It is a new day. Six episodes was too much for me. So I watched three last night and I watched three this morning. And I don't know if this is going to be controversial or not. I, I really don't. But I'm just going to be honest. I think that was my favourite story. Even though it, the Centaurans were only in the last two parts of the six part story here. I really enjoyed the first four parts where we didn't have any familiar villains. We're on Gallifrey and we see the Doctor become um, the, the, the the president of Gallifrey. I forget what they call it. It has a very extreme title. But you almost see this big, you know, ego boost come to the character and it was cool. It's something that we've seen in modern Doctor Who a lot with David Tennant being the Time Lord Victorious. It gave me those kind of vibes, which I really enjoyed seeing one of the classic Doctors go down this route, especially someone like Tom Baker who has so much charisma. The Centaurans were cool. It was really cool that they did bring a familiar villain in it for someone like me. The series itself, which we'll get into a bit in a minute, has uh, suffered a little bit on kind of lackluster villains, so it was nice to see a familiar face and I like the Centaurans. They're very threatening and I love the design they having classic who with the black jumpsuits and stuff and then it had quite a heartbreaking end as well the doctor somewhat going off all on his own it was it was kind of a sad ending and i love the way that he didn't have the courage to say bye or that he'll miss his companion leela when he left i thought that was a really nice touch and canine staying behind as well was quite sad but then of course there's that tease of canine mark too but yeah i really enjoyed this story i thought it was the best of the bunch. I thought it was my favourite story of all of them. But let's do a little recap and let's have a look at the bonus disc. So, here we are on the bonus disc. Pretty simple layout here on a menu. Let's just click on special features. And here you have everything that we get on here. We get Graham Williams documentary, the Panatomic Archives, 50th Anniversary Archive, MonsterCon 2 Convention, Studio Clocks, and Audio Archives. Shall we click on one and have a look? I'm most curious about the 50th Anniversary ones. So let's have a little look at that. Bump. How cool is that? That's a great little menu there. So I've skipped through here and we've just got basically a panel with some past companions. So we've got Ace here, of course, we've got Joe Grant. Not sure who this is on the end because she hasn't turned her face yet. So they're basically all the bonus features we get on this one. No Doctor Who cookbook, nothing like that. But yeah, there's a lot on here for people still to dive into if they really want to. Plus you've got the book which comes with the set. Let's go back to the normal setup. And let's give a little recap on this series and take one final look at this set before we conclude this pretty epic video that's taken me well over a week to film. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. But let's go back to our normal setup. It's the only scarf I have. It's not bright enough. I need to get myself a Tom Baker scarf, goddammit. Doctor Who, The Collection, Season 15. Is it worth your money? What's my overall thoughts on the set itself and the series? The series was very wishy-washy for me. I enjoyed it, definitely. It was a lot of fun. Tom Baker is great. The companion really grew on me throughout every episode. K9, big bonus. The villains are kind of underwhelming this season, I think, in design and their presence in a lot of the stories. A lot of them do come into it in just that final part. Returning villains, the only ones you get are the Centaurans. They're cool. They're just not in that final story maybe enough they're in two of the six parts but then again i really enjoyed the first four parts so i don't know if they were needed so maybe i'm contradicting myself a bit too much there the set itself is beautiful it might be my favorite this and series 20 have been my favorites the last two sets have just been beautiful lee binding's artwork gets better with each one packaging gets nicer and you get a nice solid amount of bonus features so yes in conclusion i'm going to say this set is definitely worth your money. Some people got very upset that the Doctor Who set started off at £40 and now they're in that £50 to £55 range. But compared to other box sets that are coming out for that price for like movies and stuff, these are phenomenal. With packaging and the amount of effort they put into the bonus features, they're stellar sets. And anyone putting them down on their price, I don't really understand. I think they're very reasonably priced and I could not recommend picking these up enough. I know some of them are out of print now if you're looking to just get into it. But yeah, this this set is it's beautiful. I'm over the moon with it. I had a fantastic time watching it. Please, BBC, Lee Bindings, whoever has the power to do so, announce the next set. Let's do a little fun thing here. So I'm going to try and do a video like this for every set now. Let's try and predict 
what set will be next. Now, obviously with the first two Doctors, a lot of their stories are missing. Hence why we've only got one series from them, season two being the William Hartnell one. I would love to get a Patrick Troughton one on the shelf, but I know he's missing a lot of stories. I would love, love, love just to get a Patrick Troughton one on the shelf so we've got one from every Doctor. I don't see it just yet. So my prediction is I think they're going to maybe give us one of Pertwee's seasons next. So we're only one off completing him. Because we're one off completing Sylvester McCoy. We're one off completing Peter Davison. We're pretty close now to Tom Baker. We're two Tom Baker, two Pertwee. So I think they'll go Pertwee next because we've just got a Baker one. That's my prediction. What set will they give us out of the two Pertwee ones? I'm kind of hoping we get series 11 because I actually have, I have seen his last episode with the big spider. So I'm kind of hoping to see that one and of course the introduction of Sarah Jane being in that series. So so uh, yeah, my hopes are for series 11, but yeah, I think it's going to be either series 7 or 11. My hopes are for a Patrick Troughton set next, for sure. I'd, I'd still be happy with any of them. I'm just loving these sets. I always get so excited when they announce the next one, so yeah. Anyway, guys, there we go. There's the video. I hope you enjoyed this. It's different from my last Doctor Who unboxings. It's different for this channel. We're not talking about a new release and, quite frankly, shitting on it. I've actually been a lot of praise, so that's been good. Um, and these Doctor Who says so much fun. I love talking about Doctor Who. The trailer for Pashuti's first full season just dropped as well last night, and that was great. So it's, it's, a, it's a really good time to be a Doctor Who fan at the minute. I'm really excited to see what the next set is, to watch the new season. Ah! It's a good time to be a Doctor Who fan. Doctor Who is back. Let's go.